All right, Felipe Pena got the win here tonight at uh, the main event. Who's number one? How are you feeling right now? Feeling good, man. Blessed, happy, and uh, I had an amazing camp. Like I said on the, on the interview, a blessed camp. So many nice things happen, you know, so many things that uh, I'm going to remember. And feeling happy to, to be here, to be part, and to get the win. So the match with Nicky Rod, uh, how did it go down, and what do you think you did to get the win in the decision? And it was a really tough match. I think the, the result could be to anyone, you know. Uh, like I told you, I think the cream thing is actually true. <laughs> Not talking shit about Nick. I think uh, uh, he's a warrior. He get he got the match like in a two or three days notice, you know. Uh, I think that's a fault of uh, rule, you know. If there is no rule, no penalty for that, everyone, everyone can do it, you know. Uh, but it uh, was a really tough match. He avoid the, the guard very well, he has a really good body lock, really good passing, really strong guy, really physical guy. So it was a really tough match, he had some uh, good body locks, good uh, foot locks, attack the foot, and I had some good sweeps, almost take the back, and like I said, I could go anyone, but uh, I'm happy I got the win. So there was two or three times when the referee actually wiped him down with towels. Was that at your request or did the referee do that on his own? It was my request. I actually request even more. I said like many times that uh, he was like really sleepy, you know. But uh, I feel like the referee didn't know what to do much, you know. I think there is not a, a, rule, a specific rule for that. I think in wrestling or anything like that, if you do that, you would disqualify or something like that. So. The athletes don't risk it too much to that, you know. I don't know if he actually did or not, but uh, I felt really slippery, you know. And when I told the referee, he was like, uh, didn't know what to do. Then for a couple of times, I think two times, he passed the towel on him and on, on me as well. So, uh, crazy turn of events this week. You, you got to California, you've been to California, but... As of Monday, you thought you had no time to match with Gordon. It turns into a 30-minute match with Nicky Rod. How are, you, how are you feeling about the situation now? It was not on Monday. It was on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> it was like three-day notice. Gordon was already in California, you know, and uh, on the same time, like two hours later, he was in a restaurant with his friends. Uh, he posted a picture, and two, two hours later, he sent me a message saying he, he was not going to fight because he was... Uh, take a shit like every 30 minutes and he was sick and everything so I don't know if that is actually true I think uh, uh, he's not scared of course because we are athletes we're not scared to fight but he's scared to lose after he talk so much shit and uh, I think he has so much to lose you know so he didn't have a proper camp he didn't train enough he was not feeling 100% so I think he pull out and uh, three day noticed we start like talking talking who should be so was talking Flo was talking to Nicholas and uh, Nicky Rod and um, Nicholas didn't want to do the 30 minute match I think on the beginning uh, and then Nicky Rod accept and that's it. So what's this thing that you were saying at the end that you want to stick around here and fight him in a week? Yeah I can stay for one week more you know I train three months for that, uh, to fight him, you know, I study his game, I train for a really long fight, you know. Uh, actually, the, the rule he chose was like a no time limit, you know. Like, I didn't want to do a no time limit. Flo, like the guys from Flo that I spoke, did not want to do a no time limit. The public in general did not want, doesn't know, uh, don't want to see a no time limit, but only because the boss Gordon choose an all-time limit. Uh, that's what we set up, you know. And then what happened? He pulled out three days before, and no one wants to do accept an all-time limit with three-day notice, you know. So I had uh, I trained everything for that, and then I had to I didn't have to accept, but uh, no one wants to do an all-time limit. So we end up doing like a 30 minutes match, you know, uh, in the end. This rivalry with you and Gordon, do you ever feel like this is just something that's never going to end? Like, yeah, Something going to end when I stop competing him as well, you know. I don't care about him, like, uh, 
I don't respect him at all, like outside the match, you know. I can watch his fights, his jiu-jitsu, you know, his really good jiu-jitsu, you know. And, but outside the match, as a person, you know, I don't respect him at all. So when I stop competing, I just say, whatever this guy is, you know, I don't give a shit. <laughs> So I think he, I'm pretty sure he's traveling uh, next week, from what I know. So if he's not available for next week, uh, when when would you want to do it? Like, are you looking to, to do it soon, or do you want to do another camp? Or, like, when, when do you think it's realistic you could fight him again, if not next week? Man, if not next week, uh, we can set up a good time. Depends, you know, if it's, like, three weeks or something like that. I am, like, ready already or two weeks, you know. I can take advantage from this camp. If it's take long, you know, I need to do the whole camp again. So I need to train for like two or three months again to do the fight. And it doesn't make sense to do a no time limit fight again, you know, because if anything happens, he pull out or I pull out for any reason because we got hurt or because he's pooping, pooping too much on the pants or something like that. Uh, no one gonna set to replace a uh, no time limit, so it doesn't make sense. Like, no one wants to watch a no time limit. For what I talk with Flo, the Flo doesn't want to do no time limit, you know. I don't want, any athlete want, so it doesn't make sense, like, do a no time limit after what happened, just because the boss Gordon wants to do it, you know. So, uh, makes sense now, after what happened, we do a 30 minute match. If Gordon's not available coming up for whatever reason, you guys can't come to terms, God forbid, uh, are there other athletes out there you'd be looking to compete against? Uh, yeah, many athletes. I think Nicholas would be a good fight as well, you know. Um, yeah, I'm down to fight anyone, you know, just want to uh, keep fighting Jiu Jitsu, fighting Super Fight, you know, help Jiu Jitsu grow, be part of this event. I want to. Uh, be really active, you know, and I like challenge, you know. All my career, I accept challenge that no one accepts, you know. So I don't choose much opponents, you know. If I have a good time to train, to stu study the game, you know, train for that, and it's a good purse, you know, I can fight anyone. How do you like the crowd out here? Obviously a little bit of booze about the decision, but I mean, I think the crowd was much more in favor of you here compared to Texas at the last one. I mean, walking, it took us 45 minutes to make it back here to do the interview because you had so many photos and autographs to give. Yeah. Man, I really like uh, the crowd, like US people, you know, have like so many American friends, you know. I think the last event was a really small, like 30, 300 uh, uh, people watching, you know, and was in a like Gordon City. So, of course, like his home, so of course, it'll be like. 95% cheering for him. It's the same thing that we do an event like in my city in BH, you know. It'll be like 99% of the, the crowd like cheering for me. But uh, here in California, it's like, uh, it's still like US is not my country, you know, but uh, things more like a neutral place. Like I have many friends, I have a lot of people that came here. You know, I have um, many American friends, American fans, you know, like, uh, I really, I really like uh, Americans, like uh, the people from here, you know, have so many friends. I came here since I am like 16 years old, you know. So the crowd in the end uh, was a little upset with the result because it was a pretty close match. I think I think could go through anyway, you know, and Nick Rod's American, you know, he's a great athlete. So I think it's pretty normal, like uh, some people get upset. That's part of the game, but uh, I'm just just happy to be part of, of the event, you know. I did my best out there, you know. Uh, me and him, like, we had, like, two, three days to, when we decide to fight each other, you know, so we didn't have much time to train for each other game, you know. So, uh, of course, I'm really happy to win, but any anyway, the result was, uh, I feel blessed to be here, to be part of the event. Just I uh, want to... Uh, Thanks the crowd to be here to watch this amazing event, to support the sport, you know, to support me, to support Nick, to, to help the sport grow, and uh, to help this, the the event and the jiu-jitsu jiu grow.
Reed, you got any questions for him? I just would ask about uh, the Andre camp, kind of like how that went, and if you could see yourself going back. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Man, I think uh, Andre camp, camp was great, you know, like I said on the interview, uh, me and Jorge would be like enemies. <laughs> I would bet on my house like that I would, like 10 years ago, that I would never be here training with him, you know, and the, the words, like, uh, give a lot of, uh, how you say that in English, like, uh, right, rotate right. a lot, yeah. the words rotate a lot, you know, and now I'm here doing this camp with Andre, you know, and uh, he become a really good friend. Him, Angelica, Kainan, everyone from Atos, you know, I really feel home out there, you know, even I'm not representing Atos, I represent Gracie Barra, you know, so it was kind of like a, a Rocky Tree movie, <laughs> like Rocky and Apollo, you know, and uh, it was a so, so cool camp, you know, so cool camp, so many good memories. I definitely, uh, once you come back, you know, I don't know how gonna be, when, when this match gonna be, you know, if, uh, but uh, I definitely feel really good out here. And uh, uh, I did so many friends and everyone that, uh, everything that I thought I would find here, you know, was even more, you know, even more, or like, was up my expectation. So it was a, a really cool time. All right, to close it out, say whatever you want, man. Just want to like to thank Flo, you know, to make this this great event. Uh, to thank my sponsor, BPS Capital, Albine Preto, you know, uh, Primas Corporate, and uh, Caffeine Arm, you know. Thanks, Nick Rod, to take this match in such a short, short notice. Uh, and thanks all for the support, everyone who likes my game, who likes my Jiu-Jitsu, who came here and watch my family, my friends, my coach, you know, everyone from Grace Barra, Andre, Angelica, uh, Kaina, everyone from Atos, and that's it. Thanks for the support, guys. You even got Hamilo to come out. What? So you even got Hamilo to come out. Yeah. I'm going see him at a tournament here. Yeah, he doesn't like anymore, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think he had a good time here, you know, it was a really special moment to have. Like him, Draculino, my brother, Galvão, you know, uh, together on the, with the same goal, you know, like help me. It was a really uh, a special moment uh, for me, for Galvão, for Romulo, for everyone, you know. It was, was really cool to see, see uh, some older rivality, you know, like uh, Galvão and Romulo, and after Galvão and me uh, bring together. Uh, in a friendship with the same goal, you know, have a good time and uh, bring the, all this together uh, was really cool, you know, in the sport and feel better to, to be able to make that happen, you know, uh, and to be part of that. So it sounds like the Avengers aren't done. Huh? The Avengers aren't done yet. Not done, not done. There's more to come. <laughs> All right, Felipe, thanks, congrats. Thank you.